said, this is Yasmin Yusuf from uh, Decibel LK. And right now we are going to kickstart something all new. It is Decibel Reviews with myself and Ch -ch 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 Chang, Edward Chang, also yeah. known as Echo. So Edward, an intro to him is uh, he's like a DJ as well as a producer. He is from Singapore. And just like all of us, he's like a major music enthusiast. Did I cover all of that? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So uh, so what are we going to review today, yes? So, you know, there's been this album that I've been listening to for uh, a few weeks now. It's by an artist I've been wanting to get a hold of for the longest time ever, but he's like the most difficult artist to so far to get a hold of. But man, this guy right here, he is one heck of a prolific rapper, uh, Sean Vincent DePaul. So he is like a uh, Sri Lankan Tamil artist based in Canada. He's got like a very interesting story to him. And uh, I got to know about this guy, I think it was like a few years ago, when uh, a Facebook friend of mine, Bo Zedkid, had done like a, um, I think it was like an artwork for one of his singles. And then when I saw that, I immediately checked out, you know, the artist, Sean, and I was really, really surprised at what I saw. This guy, there's a reason why we're reviewing his album today. It is just legitimate fire. Oh, man, you've heard it too, right? Yeah, I loved it. I mean, what's not to love about that album, man? It is just pure artistry it's honesty it's so many things just all wrapped into like a glorious uh, sonic masterpiece called made in japan mm -hmm. the main japan album like i think it's about 12 13 tracks long uh it's pretty pretty fire you know like uh for me when i heard it I, I thought of like uh, the musical science of Nas and Logic, the way he used a lot of instrumentals, a lot of orchestra. And then like he knows how to pick the moments where suddenly it's just silent with a cappella. That's very reminiscent of um, Kendrick Lamar in DNA. So and it's also the topics that he, he brings up as well. Like um, he actually talks a lot about the war and what he mm. saw through the war. Like for me as a Singaporean, I, I did not live through the war like you guys. But we do study about the war in our schools. And so, but then when we read about the war in our schools, all it just tells us is it's a conflict, people die, and uh, eventually it was resolved. But it doesn't really tell us the stories that uh, the people face on the ground. And through yeah. listening to Made in Jaffna, like it has given me that perspective of how was it when someone was living through the war. I mean, this album, I haven't listened to any of his other albums, by the way. I think he had like one more before this, right? Yeah. It was released, I think, one or two years ago. Okay. So I've listened to most of his singles because that's, you know, how I uh, kept, you know, being completely whatchamacallit, like in touch with his music and stuff like that. So when Made in Jaffna came out, I made it a point to listen, to hear his side of the story. And it's so interesting. Like he starts off with this beautiful piece called Made in Jaffna. And then you hear, you know, like sounds of Sri Lanka Jaffna. You know, you hear him in the marketplace, you hear things. And that just paints like a beautiful, authentic, you know, picture in your head as to where he's from. And I love that start. What did you think about it? Um, I thought it was really, really good. And which also brings me up to like the other thing that uh, I think I told you about this afternoon when we were talking about it. Like the whole, the way he uses all these different elements from just day, day to day life. It's like painting a picture. If you close your eyes, it's like watching a movie made of sound. It's something that if you really, really put the time and the money into, you could probably adapt it into like a musical film or a, a, a stage musical telling the story of um, Sean Vincent de Paul or the story mm. of a Tamil Sri Lankan through like, you know, who had to escape the war and stuff like that. And I, I thought that was, I thought that was an amazing part of the album that really kind of adds so much depth to it that creates that human connection because you know mm. we're, we're, humans are auditory when we hear certain things it elicits certain feelings so we can kind of 
he the way he uses all these sonic elements creates this bridge that allows us to feel what he feels and i feel that that was a, a bigger part of giving us uh that connection as uh as much as his lyrics did you know and journeying through the album something that i've realized is there is so much of truth in that album i mean some of his more darker delves from uh, i think it was uh, a thousand red roses and was it hundred thousand hundred thousand flowers hundred thousand flowers man that song really hits the nail in the heart you know it's just like so much of truth as someone who's seen it all the tragedies and stuff like from his perspective once you hear that you're like oh god i'm so sorry you had to go through that and another song that I found myself so engaging in is uh, Uiri. Mm -hmm. It is such a beautiful, almost like a biographical piece of what a lot of Tamils are expected, like in marriages and love and things like that. But I think mostly marriages and his side of the story, his daughter, his ex-wife, that relationship, wow that song for me was like the thing with this particular album is that there's two extremes there isn't that one place where you'd call the gray space it's either truth and then the other truth the truth that says this is where i'm from and then the truth that says hold on we're gonna get out we're gonna make it through is that what you also felt um i felt i i i can agree to that but like to me it's more of it's like uh you know it's like watching a, like that kind of tv show where you were seeing him now and then he's like and then like the the stories of Jaffna and Sri Lanka are in flashbacks which uh, and then it flashes back and forth through his life story and then you see who he is now because like I think it was in heaven he also talks about how uh meeting his ex his wife and all these people build up to the experience to who he is and that mm. if he didn't meet them he wouldn't be who he is today so in a sense I, I felt it was more like a culmination of like all his experiences and he's telling an autobiography and it's the truth of what he saw the truth of what his family saw and the truth of what he went through being a migrant in Canada yeah I see it that way I, okay that's very interesting. So have any of the songs stood out to you? I really like 100,000 Roses and Nie Oli. Yeah. And why was that? Uh, I don't know. This 100,000 Roses was more of like, he. if you listen to the lyrics, there's a lot of contrast. Like how he talks about, like how he, he the way he introduces Jaffna today is is like in, in like how you would read it from a tourist brochure it's beautiful the scene is to die for and then immediately in the next line or the line before he talks about all the people who died there the hundred thousand flowers are for the people who the hundred thousand people who have died there and then for near early i just really like the tomb i like the kind of elements he brings in um singapore in singapore majority of the indian population in singapore are tamil so we are exposed to how Tamil music sounds like, or, or at least we know a little bit of Tamil culture. And uh, we enjoy that as well. Like for me, I enjoy Tamil music. So I really like the elements he brought into Nia Oli. I feel like this particular album is a, you know, just a stepping stone to that next big thing. Because uh, I think it was before he released his album, he got signed on to Maja, which is one of the biggest things in uh, Southeast Asia right now. And interestingly enough, there's a lot of artists who are on that label, which Sri Lankan wrote, in case you didn't know. Mm, not really, no. It's actually my first yeah, so time hearing about the, about the label. Okay, so man, that is something to be watching out for. And this is something that I'm so proud of as well to see so many, you know, people with Sri Lankan roots on that label. And, uh, but again, Maja, if you're anyone from Maja's checking this out, we've been trying to get a hold of you. Uh, but man, 
it's something that we're all so proud of and we're all looking forward to seeing like this complete Asian explosion of music on the billboards and everywhere else because I feel like Asia has done so much and now it's that time. Yeah, um, like even uh, I, I, I know, I know, like if you're talking about Asia, like ever since I've seen uh, 88 Rising ri- pushing East Asian music um, and then like you see MIA doing her, her movie and stuff like that, you can see that the whole world is starting to adapt to Asian culture and Asian culture is starting to be more open and willing to share mm-hmm. our stories with the rest of the world. The world is now more connected and globalized than ever. And which is incredible because that way it just creates that healthy exchange. And before you know it, boom, bada, bing, man, our very own taking over. It's always pride and joy there. Mm. Yep, yep. You know, something that I also wanted, I, I was hoping this would be part of the album. Hang on. I think there's this one song, man, that I was hoping, I think it was called Friendship or something. Hang on. So something that I wanted to like talk about uh, about this album is that he has very interesting collaborations. He's collaborated with uh, Navs 47, who also happens to be of Jaffna. Uh, she's got the Jaffna roots, man. And wow, the mm-hmm. two of them together, that is pure fire. And I'm so glad you said one of the singles that really stood out to you was uh, Nie Oli. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that was awkward, wasn't it? <laughs> no, the, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. Um, one of the the, the my other favorite track was Nia Oli. I did like Nav Forty Seven's uh voice on that song, and it's not just she appears on the album more than on Nia Oli as well. So like every time she shows up, you hear her vocals. It's really haunting. And it's really good. And I think it's in. It's very smart that he's kind of used a lot of um, uh, Tamil artists on the tracks that really speaks his truth. Like even uh, Uire, yeah? Like he mm-hmm. has Yanshin, who's like a long-term collaborator. Um, I think they did this track uh, that sampled Mustafa, Mustafa, don't worry, Mustafa, have you heard that? Like no, I have song not. In the 90s. No, I have not. I, I'm sorry. Of, uh, <laughs> Yeah, because like I um like when, in the nineties I was still like in the US, so I didn't really okay. hear a lot of Asian music. So uh Mustafa was uh I think that's the name of his song. Uh I can't remember the original <laughs> title, but that song was huge because it was just this beautiful song about friendship. So him and uh Yanshin had that. And so it was incredible to see that he had brought Yanshin in this Oyere track and it's haunting. It's beautiful. So cool. I think we had like an interesting look. I know this is more of a very personalized look because, uh, you know, I think music is something that speaks to us personally. And once I feel if we talk honestly and truthfully about our album experiences, I guess it becomes wholesome to everyone else. And uh, it would be great if you could comment below and let us know what track really spoke to you. Um, Because that would be like incredible to know as well. And so thanks a lot for being a part of the very first edition of Decibel Reviews. Uh, Ed, Echo, we're going to do this again. Uh, If there's like an album or an EP you want us to check out, uh, regardless of genre, regardless of language, uh, as long as it's Sri Lankan, we're down to check it out, review and all that, all that. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, there was never an international scene without a local one to keep the board in. Yeah, see you guys soon. Bye.